Hello and welcome to another CAD clip. In this uh, lesson, we're going to do a demo on using Revit Structure 2017. So just kind of a demo for people who want to um, see what it can do or maybe what it can't do. Um, I'm going to start by using my structural template here in my Revit 2017. What this does is it starts up our project using a specific template that has been pre-set up and um, determined to draw structural stuff. You can use any one of the template files, but the one that's optimized best for your application would be, you know, mechanical or architectural or construction or whatever you want to use um, in uh, getting your office template file set up. And once we get our base file open, we can see that we've got some elevation bubbles in here. We've got our project browser and our property. So the first thing I usually do is have a look at my one of my elevation views. So I'll double click on here just so I can kind of see what I've got here. Okay, I've got a level one and a level two. Well, let's add a new level in here. So on the architectural or structural tab, I'm going to say level. I'm not going to worry too much about where it is. I'm just going to pick a point. And you can see it's telling me it's about three meters, about 10 feet. Hit escape when I'm done. And then zoom in and I can say, okay, I've got, you know, three levels at about 10 feet apart. Um, and it's also created a, um, a view of that level inside of here. So I'm going to say level one is my top of foundation. And then this is maybe the first floor and the second floor. And I can rename these as well. So let's go down to level one and let's draw some grid lines. So I'm going to say under architecture or structure, I'm going to say draw some grid lines. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm just going to draw some grid lines in. Something like that. And Revit's going to automatically number them. Accordingly, again, I can go in and rename and renumber these after the fact. If you wanted to go nice and straight, hold your shift key in. Escape, escape on the keyboard. And I'm just going to pick this guy, drag it down. So I've got some grid lines there. And if I go back to my elevations, you can see that I've got my grid lines there. And I might even want to pull them down a little bit lower. Okay, same thing from the other elevation. So again, I can go in and rename these anytime just by picking inside of there. So let's go back to my level one. And now I want to just draw some basically a square foundation wall, maybe put a pier or something here in the middle or split this and maybe put some load bearing walls. So I'm going to go to our structure from my level one and I'm going to draw a wall. I'm going to say draw a structural wall. And I can pick my wall type off of here. Generic 200 looks good to me. And I'm going to go depth. I'm going to go down, you know, about 1,500, about five feet. Perfect. And I'm going to use a rectangle tool. And I'm going to use location line as in the core base exterior. Snap to that corner. And then snap to this corner. Escape, escape, and I'm done. Okay, now I can just draw maybe an individual wall. Uh, by using center. So I'll say, okay, same as before, but wall center line, and I'll pick a point there, draw across there, and maybe even draw one across here for whatever reason. Okay, if I go to a 3D view, you can see there's my walls. In this particular 3D view, it's set to be wireframe. I'm going to change this and say hidden line. And I'm also going to turn my analytical stuff off. So I'm just going to go over here and hit this button, it turns that analytical stuff off down in here. So back to my level one, and I can draw now maybe put some columns in here. So I'm going to say, okay, uh, let's draw some columns. Structural, and let's draw some columns. And I'm going to use a vertical column, and I'm going to say at grid lines, and I'm just going to go like this and pick all of these guys, okay? And I would have selected my column type here, of course, beforehand. And then I just hit finish. Going to finish, it's going to add some columns in. Now, it centers those columns on there. So what am I going to do? Well, do I want to relocate the columns or do I want to relocate the walls? Well, let's relocate the walls. So I'm just going to use my align tool just as an example of what we might do. I'm not saying this is how we design a building. And I'm just going to use my tab key and select there. So picking on here, tab, tab, click. And picking on here, tab, tab, click, 
So just some afterthought, pick on here, tab, tab, click. So using my align tool, I can put some columns on there and I might even have to add some concrete columns in below that. Let's do it. Uh, let's go to structure and let's do a column and let's pick a different column this time. Let's go with a concrete, you know, 450 by 600. Let's say I'm going to duplicate that, make a new one. Let's say, okay, take that, duplicate it, make it a 450 by 450. And all I have to do is change my numbers inside of here to be 450. Hit OK. And it's going to be depth down by um, 1500, same as the wall. And I'm going to say at grid lines, might as well. Click on here and finish. Okay. Escape, escape. No, I think those original columns were not at the right level. Let's go to our 3D view. Okay. There's my concrete columns. And there's those steel columns. So watch, I'm going to pick this column. I'm going to right click and say, select all instances in the view. So it's going to grab all those steel columns. Now that I have them all selected, I'm going to change the properties and say, okay, well, these are going from level one up to level three, in fact. Okay. And the base offset is zero. And I'm doing this sloppy on purpose just to show you what you can do. Um, try it again. I almost got it. I click on here, right click and select all instances in the view. And the problem is this, it's not minus 2,500, it's level one up to level three. So just as an example of, you know, playing around with stuff after the fact and being a bit sloppy. Uh, let's go to structure and add some footings in here. So let's go um, foundation wall footing. Click on here. I'm going to pick this type of footing. I'm going to tab to pick all of those, and it's going to add the footing in there. It's going to add a footing in there. Escape, escape. Now I've got my concrete column embedded down inside of there. Escape. Let's do a little window box here. I don't see those little columns. Let's go back to my level one. Let's add those piers in again. There's my footings. Uh, structural column. There's my 450 by 450 at grid lines. Okay. And like this. And finish. And go to a 3D view. Okay, there's my columns properly placed. And when I place them, I would have noted the heights over here as well, right? So I've got my piers, concrete piers inside of here. And then I've got my walls. And if they are the same material, the two will join up and everything else. Um, now let's go to my level two and let's draw some beams in here. So I'm saying, okay, uh, architectural beam, I'm going to go with the steel beam right inside of here. And again, I'm going to say on grids. And I'm going to go like this, pick all those grid lines, and hit finish. Okay, got some beams in there. Now I'm going to go up to my level three, do the same thing. I'm going to draw some beams. Okay, it's assuming level three. Okay, over here and offsets. Everything looks good. And again, I'm going to say on grids, pick over here, and then hit finish. And then I can go to my 3D view. And now I've got some walls, some piers, some beams. I'm going to put a beam system in. So this time I'm going to say structural. I'm going to say beam system. And I'm going to select a member off of here. And uh, beam system. And I'm going to use this type of shape. Um, let's pick one on here. Uh, let's go with this guy. And of course, we could load in some open web steel joists, etc., and, and use those as well. And my beam boundary line, I'm going to say good and click in here. Oops. Um, let's do it from a switch over to a 3D view. And let's use the uh, pick supports. One, two, three, four, span direction there. No, I want to change my beam direction to be here instead, and then hit finish. It's going to put in a beam system according to 
the spacing that I had had, go to a 3D view, and there's my beam system. Now what happened? It went in on the wrong level. Let's fix that. Let's hover over here, tab to pick that beam system and see what, what is it going in here at. Elevation zero pattern. Okay. Did not get the right, um, let's say edit boundary. And let's say set the work plane. And let's say we wanted that to be at level three, not level one. Hit OK and finish. And now my beam system's up in the right place. OK, back to my level three. There's my beam system. I can change my detail level to be fine detail inside of there. So now let's do another beam system. So we go structure, beam system. And we're on level three, elevation zero. Everything looks good here. And let's go automatic beam system with this. And I'm going to hover over here and go click on there. It's going to add that beam system in there. Pick over here. Pick over here. Okay. Go to my 3D view. And then I've got my beam system down in there. Go to my level two. Finish. Oh, quit sketching. And level two and same thing. Uh, beam system. I'm going to use the automatic. And this time, for whatever reason, I'm going to span them, my beams this way. Again, you can pick a different shape if you've loaded up a different member inside of there. And go to a 3D view. SD on the keyboard. I'm not sure why it keeps going into sketch mode there. Quit my sketch. Escape. Type SD on the keyboard for shaded. Maybe turn some shadows on. For the fun of it. Okay, shift middle mouse. And there's the beginning of our little structural model. And as a little bonus uh, lesson, what we can also do if we want to get some neat sloping systems in here, let's pull this corner up here just as an example. I'm going to click inside of here. I'm going to grab this column and say, okay, that column is, goes up to level three, you know, plus 1500, which is about five feet. And that gets done. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tab, because this is supporting this beam system, I'm going to tab to select this particular uh, beam, and I'm going to grab this guy over here, and I'm going to bump it up by 1,500 on the one end. Watch what's going to happen with my beam system. So because they're supported by that guy, it follows that up, clicking out. And I'm going to tab to grab this guy. And just to complete it, I'm going to move him up by 1,500, click out going to add that in there. So um, if we want to, we can get uh, pretty creative with um, sloping beam systems as well as traditional flat beam systems.